Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the last talk of the morning session. Um, we have David zoltman Riki talking about momentum space unitary couple cluster for periodic systems on quantum computers. OK, thank you, Nathan. Um, so as uh, the title said, I will talk about uh, the extension of unitary couple cluster method for solid states um, to do weak weak calculations on quantum computer. Um, a little bit of um, outline at the beginning. So first I will um, talk about the mean field solution for periodic system. Um, this is quite uh, important. Uh, um, then how we construct uh, the second quantized Hamiltonian for periodic systems. Um, and then I will talk about some more uh, the VQ algorithm, how we extend um, the, the, the periodic Hamiltonian uh, for VQ. And then I will show a couple of example systems, hydrogen chains um, and hydrogen lattices um, to, to verify your method. And then I will talk about some uh, possible reduction uh, methods because we will see um, that uh, the, the UCCST scales quite very badly with the, with the system side. Um, so the mean field uh, method for periodic systems. So when we want to do a VQE calculation for a molecular system, then we usually start uh, with some classical codes. So the Hartree-Fock equations for the molecules, I generate the second quantized Hamiltonian and then apply the UCC um, as the method, for example. So this will, this is the, we will do the same thing for, for periodic systems as well, following the same recipe. Uh, but we have an important uh, decision uh, to make because often when we do uh, mean field calculations for periodic system, we use plane wave uh, basis functions because that's naturally fitting to the periodic systems. Um, although we can also use uh, localized Gaussian basis sets uh, for solid states, and that's quite often used for, for molecular cases as well. So the, we have to decide which one, and both of them has some advantages and disadvantages. But we actually use is the Gaussian basis set because probably uh, in the near future, the, we, we, we can handle only a few number of qubits. Um, and uh, the bad thing about the basis, the plane wave basis set that Usually, it requires a many number of basis functions to, um, to, to, to get relatively accurate results. And that uh, will uh, push up the number of qubits that we will need. So if we use a Gaussian basis set, how we extend that to, to periodic systems. So if we have a unit cell, and there are some atoms in it, and uh, uh, we use a localized basis set uh, to, to, to cover those, those atoms, then we can extend that to the entire crystal structure uh, by basically replicating these Gaussian uh, or localized basis set um, to every other unit cell. So formally, we will have an infinite number of uh, localized basis, basis functions, but uh, it, it will have an extra so the indexing will be such that there will be the orbital index within the unit cell, and then this translational lattice vector index uh, uh, for, for the, the basis function as well. So this is not very uh, convenient to handle. Um, so usually it is rotated into a reciprocal lattice, uh, lattice space. So uh, we do a discrete Fourier transformation to get this uh, rotated or uh, Fourier transformed uh, basis functions. So instead of R, we will have this momentum K indexes. And the good thing about this transformation, that if we have only one electron integral uh, uh, with a kernel with, with an operator, which has a translational invariance, lattice translational invariance, then uh, the, these uh, matrices uh, will become diagonal in K. So we can decouple all the uh, Hartree-Fock equations in, in this K index, so which is very uh, useful because we can solve all the eigenvalue problems for uh, each K uh, independently. 
So this is uh, very uh, useful in, in the classical level. And another thing to point out that we also introduced here a truncation because we did a, a discrete Fourier transformation and uh, uh, we choose some L, uh, so, uh, which is the number of K points sampling the, the green zone, the reciprocal that is uh, a cell. Uh, and this is equivalent basically by taking this infinite crystal and then just picking up a slightly cluster from, from this big uh, crystal, which has a size of like L1, L2, L3, respectively in the, in the dimensions. And then this will be uh, basically the K mesh as well in the, in the reciprocal lattice space. So this, this two set of uh, basics functions, the, the reciprocal, the, the real space basis function in, in this block, and the corresponding Fourier transform reciprocal basis functions uh, describe the equivalent system. And uh, so once we have these set of basis functions, we can construct uh, the second context Hamiltonian says, as uh, usually we do in the molecular case, um, we know that these two Hamiltonians are related to each other by this Fourier transformation. And uh, of course, we can do the same with the cluster operators as well, um, as, uh, as we usually do again in the molecular case. Uh, and what happens in practice is that we solve the hartley fock equations um, in, in the uh, reciprocal lattice space to, to obtain the solutions, the crystal orbitals um, in it. And then, because we know the, the hartley fock solution we do an inverse Fourier transformation to get the localized version of the crystal orbitals, which are these so-called the, the, the one-year orbitals, so the localized um, uh, version of, 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 of the block function of the uh, crystal orbitals. So, and the very important point is that uh, these integrals and also the amplitudes uh, um, has the translational symmetry because it's a crystal, so when we do the Fourier transformations, actually there will be a lot of reduction in the number of terms. So formally we have four indexes in the summations, for example, in the two electron integrals, but uh, those terms which does not obey this uh, momentum conservation rule, uh, they will be zero. So actually the scaling is not L to the four in the summation, but just only L to the three, um, in, 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 the, in this uh, summation, this is true for the cluster amplitude as well. So this uh, gives us some uh, reduction. And if we want to do a VQ calculation, then um, we follow the usual recipe. So we trotterize the exponential of the cluster operators. So we will get the, the product of exponential of some Pauli strings, but usually these parameters correspond to the, uh, um, the cluster amplitudes. Now, the, the important point here is that uh, the cluster amplitudes, because of the Fourier transform, become complex. So we need to separate them to imaginary and, uh, and real parts. So we, if we write the cluster operators in this way, we see that um, there will be a usual term for the real parts where we have the excitation uh, the difference of the excitation and the de excitation operator, but there will be these extra terms with the sum of them uh, multiplied by this imaginary factor. Um, so if we uh, do a usual, for example, Jordan Wigner uh, encoding, then uh, we will get uh, the, 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 the usual encoding for the difference. We will get uh, a different kind of terms. Uh, when we have the summation. So there will be, for example, even number of y's in, in, in these terms, but there is a, this i factor which modifies it. So, so, so eventually uh, in these um, trotterized UCC ansatz, you, uh, that the, the coefficients will be uh, the real and the imaginary part of, of, of the amplitudes independently. So the, the variational parameters will be the imaginary and the 
a real part uh, of, of the cluster operator. And so this means that basically formally we doubled the number of uh, variational parameters. And also we doubled the, the number of uh, uh, Pauli strings. So the, the circuit depth effectively is doubled. So regarding the parameters, it's actually not so bad because there are these relations between the complex amplitude. So we can show that actually the number of independent parameters is not doubled uh, because uh, of these relations. So the, the systems that they were investigating um, was a hydrochain chain, lithium chain, lithium hydrochain, helium chain, and uh, two and three dimensional hydrogen and uh, helium lattices. Uh, we were choosing, we were parameterizing the, the geometry in, uh, in a way that we have alternating uh, bond lengths and we have the hydrogen molecule. And typically uh, what we found that uh, when we do um, VQE um, calculations in momentum space or in uh, the localized space, then we get the, the, the same uh, UCC energy, which is a good sign. Also, we compare this with classical um, CCS uh, energies, and we found uh, good comparisons. So the biggest systems, what we uh, investigated, it was a 5K point system with STL 3G hydrogen molecules. So this was a 20 qubit calculation. And uh, one uh, important thing uh, to note or interesting thing to note that if we um, stretch the system, so the stretch this hydrogen chain, then we, uh, we found that actually the, the UCC as the calculation what, what we, we did gave a higher energy than the CCSD calculation. So, so this, this, uh, this panel here shows the, the error um, this is the, for example, the five K point calculation for a hydrogen chain when the distance between the hydrogen um, molecules uh, or, or this big parameter is quite large. Uh, and these green dots are the CCSD. This is the, uh, the, the chemical accuracy line. So you can see that uh, in this case, the, the red one, the UCCSD energy is like just very make the, reach the, the chemical accuracy. So uh, this is in a very extreme case when, when, when this molecule is, is, is stretched. So regarding the resources, uh, what do we need? So if we are in the, Hamid, in, in the uh, momentum space, then the number of terms in the Hamiltonian is scale speed L cubed. So this N is the number of orbitals in a unit cell and N is the number of K points. So in, a, in a, a localized space, in the lattice space, it scales formally with n to the four, but we know that due to transitional symmetry, many times equivalent. So actually we don't really need to measure them. So the, the gain is actually not that uh, uh, much. So we also did the gamma calculations. Uh, this is basically just taking this very big uh, block of, uh, uh, of, of a psychic cluster and then do a, a gamma point parity calculation on, on, on that. Um, this is always uh, scales with uh, add to the four. Um, there is nothing uh, special about this. So the, if we look at the number of variation parameters in the ansatz, again, we will see this add to the three for the K and add to the four for the, the localized uh, system. But again, we have the transitional symmetry. So many amplitudes are actually the same. So there is not much, uh, in, again, although if we look at the ansatz, then it's clear that uh, it, the depth or the, the, the number of excitations in, in the ansatz is scales with add to the three in the momentum space and add to the four um, in the localized space. And this uh, cannot be uh, trivially reduced. So we, we find this, we, we will um, empirically check this with hydrogen chain. Um, and 
the, the one important question is how big is this L? So for this particular system for, for hydrogen chain and lithium chain, this is the, the, the mean field uh, energy convergence with a with number of Ls. So we can say that if you want to reach uh, some 10 to the minus three, four um, accuracy or, or convergence, then you need like L uh, 10. And this is not rare. So when typically we do solid state calculations, then we, um, uh, we, we may reach the hundreds as well. So we can see that these scales, these times, these numbers will be enormously large very quickly. So what we can do to, to reduce, um, so there are of course many different techniques and it's being researched and man, there are many discussions what we had uh, in the last week as well, uh, many talks about simplifying the problem. So obviously there are embedding techniques uh, classically, which has many itera iterations in it. Um, there are symmetry-based reduction. There is one which is quite very intuitive, is neglecting some of the excitations in this, uh, uh, in the UCC uh, uh, method, or, or, or of course there are, there are many, uh, uh, many other methods. So, so one, so if, if we want to neglect excitations, um, or, or use the symmetry, then it's worth to investigate the amplitude. So this is uh, the cluster amplitude for the L equal, the, 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 all the cluster amplitudes for the L equal to Ks. Um, you can see that the CCSD amplitudes are actually quite similar to the UCCSD amplitudes. Um, if you want to exploit symmetries, then it's worth to note that why there are some amplitudes which are exactly the, the same in the CCSD uh, due to trotterization, not the, the parameters what we get uh, might be from the uh, UCCSD um, will be uh, slightly, uh, slightly different. Um, so uh, that's uh, a thing to note. And also, uh, we were, if you want to exploit uh, symmetry further, then we can do qubit tapering uh, because of the translation invariance, we can actually uh, reuse uh, one extra qubit. Uh, and eventually for this particular system, we managed to reuse um, four qubits. So originally it was eight and then we got in, down to, to four qubit uh, uh, system. So, we can do the UCCSD in the localized space uh, where we have now more amplitudes, but we can see that many of the, the amplitudes are actually the same. Um, and again, we can find the same thing that although we have similar same amplitudes in the CCSD case, those will be only similar in, in, the, in the UCCSD case. Um, another thing to note that in this particular case, there are these two excitations which are quite large and others are uh, uh, significantly smaller. So if you want to start neglecting excitations, you might do it in, in, in the localized space. Um, so, and this is the basic idea behind uh, uh, the or, or QSC method with the translation operator. So if you are in the localized space, then you know that some of the excitations, some of the amplitudes are um, probably small because they, they are between remote uh, unit cells. So for example, from MP to theory, you could say that uh, the amplitudes are uh, proportional with the, with the two electron integrals. Um, and then you are in localized space. So if the centers so in these integrals are far, then, then this is a small number. So you, you, you could probably uh, cover many of the, the correlations if you include excitations on the uh, nearby uh, unit cells. Um, so, so for, so, so th this could be done. But what we what we did is even went further. We used uh, sort of. Uh, 
non-orthogonal VQ technique on, on this periodic system, or, or, or depending on the point of view, we also call it the soft space expansion uh, method with translational operator, which basically say that we write our ansatz as a linear combination of, uh, of ansatzes, which include excitation only within a limited window of, of, of unit cell, with a limited uh, window of consecutive unit cells. So uh, in, in, in this case, for example, if you L plus three, then you pick a window of, of two, and then you will have UCC as the excitation only within this V2. And then you create the translated or sh shifted version of these um, of, of these excite of, of these ansatzes, and then you take the linear combination of that. So and, and, and then you generate, for example, this, this shifted version with a with a translational operator. So uh, if we have these ansatzes. Uh, we can construct the, the subspace expansion matrices, uh, the overlap and the Hamilton matrices. And uh, the nice thing is that these matrices will be uh, a circular length matrices. So the, the eigenvalues uh, can be explicitly written down as, um, as, as, as it's shown here. So the, uh, so, and, and then if we want to do to complete the VQE calculation, then we have to uh, basically minimize uh, these energy with respect to all the, the, the parameter or the, um, the, the answers parameters and also picking up the, the lowest eigenvalue. So if we examine uh, this expression, then we can see the advantage. So, um, so we need to measure these expectation values and depending on the point of view of non-orthogonal VQE or subspace expansion, we can uh, use different strategies to, to evaluate these, these terms. So uh, if the, the, the important part that because there are entanglement only in a limited, uh, limited uh, uh, number of qubits within these ansatzes, the, the, the computation resources are uh, just scaling with this window, window size, both the terms, amplitude, excitation, and the number of qubits required. So uh, this is where uh, the uh, the computation again is 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 coming from. Um, so as I mentioned in in this key paper, um, they describe how to. Uh, so if we're using the non non orthogonal technique in this paper, is described how we can uh, calculate these stems with, uh, um, with the swap test and other uh, techniques. There are multiple techniques to calculate these, but another important thing is that we need not just the model square of this quantity, but actually uh, the both the real and the imaginary part of it. And so if we check some results for the, the L equal uh, three STO three G hydrogen case, then we can see that this uh, um, magenta line uh, uh, sh sh shows the, the energy. And then in some cases, this approximation is quite good, but as we stretch, we of course, um, it means that we will have more um, uh, correlations between remote region, probably. So that, that's why the, the, um, the approximation is, is, is forced in, in those cases. Um, and uh, again, if, if we are using the, the non-orthogonal non um, uh, VQE method, then uh, the number of qubits what we usually need uh, is, is the two M plus one, where M is the number of qubits in an ansatz. So in this particular case, it's actually not very uh, good thing to use uh, because the number of qubits in this case is more than what you could get if you, if you directly evaluate these, um, these you turn these, in, these calculation into expectation values and then um, evaluate it with, in, in this case, it would be 12 qubits, whereas this would be uh, 17 qubits. 
And uh, so basically, uh, to, 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 to summarize, we found that uh, the scaling properties of the UCC prophetic uh, systems is, uh, is, is more favorable in the reciprocality space. We have to watch out for the complex amplitudes. Uh, and if you want to reduce how the excitation, you, you may do it in, in the localized space. And then you can use this uh, translational QSC techniques to reduce the circuit depth, number of qubits, number of uh, attempts to measure. Um, and uh, many of these uh, details is, is found in this uh, preprint. Um, and um, to do these calculations, we, we use Pi uh, CF, Open Fermi, or Kulax, and or uh, human code that uh, so you can see. So uh, I finish here. Thank you very much, David. It's nice to know that these techniques can be applied to periodic systems. Uh, we have a few questions in the Slack, so I'll read them out. From Bruno Sengen, what ca can the difference that you note that you noted on the trotterized UCCSD amplitudes, which are, however, the same in CCSD, lead to some breaking of symmetries, like spin conservation, for example, for instance? Um, I'm not sure I understand. Um, so the the spin con conservation is. Um, Yes, so 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 the spin conservation uh, is is there in in both cases. Uh -huh. I, I, th I think the question is more related to: Do you have any intuition of why the CCSD is better than the UCCSD for the for the stretched case? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's hard to know. Yeah, it, it, it's hard to know that. It's it's also a little bit tricky what we analyze there because um, the CCSD is non-variational. So I, I plotted the difference in the logarithmic curve, taking the modulus square of it or, or the, the, the absolute value of it. So sometimes the um, the CCSD looks accurate, but it actually went below the, the full FCI. Um, so it's hard to say that why, why it is exactly better. Um, it's also, yeah, we need to know that it's just trotterized with one step only. Um, so mm, not totally clear. So, uh, thanks. So the next question is from Gabriel Green Dinit. Um, uh, I'm wondering if, it, wondering, is it possible to take even more advantage of the reduction of case summation indices by using different ANSATs. Example, if you replace the UCSD with the hardware efficient ANSATs, is there a relation between complex amplitudes that translates to different numbers of terms in the qubit Hamiltonian? Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Big question. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Uh huh. Well, I, 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 I have to think about this. Like this is uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, probably, probably we need, need to explore this more. So, so when you replace the UCCSD with hardware fish ansatz, um, then you completely, um, th th then basically you don't really need to care about the, the complex amplitudes. So the, the, the complex amplitude is somehow the nature of the UCC as the, as the answer it's in the um, um, in the momentum space. And the fact that you have complex terms in the Hamiltonian, I don't think that interacts with the hardware efficient answers directly. So if you have if your hardware efficient answers gives you the full FCI um, expansion, then uh, yeah, I don't think they did this to interact, but <laughs> yeah, uh, I probably I need to think about this. Yeah. And what, one last one from me. So what what was the, what, what what's the main problem with the complex amplitude? You said it led to some difficult um, things. Ah, so it is not really a main problem, although it, it you directly cannot put the 
the, the complex amplitude into the, the exponential uh, in the circuit. So, so you need to separate them to real and imaginary part. And then this will give you, this will double the number of Pauli strings in your ansatz. Did you rotate it in a different basis then? Or do you just, no. Yeah, yeah. So, so you rotate it in a basis where you, you, you actually need this, this, this imaginary part as well. And um, the, so if you, do you, do you still see this? <laughs> oh, no, no. Okay. So. It, it's not sharing, no. Yeah. There, we, there we go. Yeah, so. So if you if you have if all your cluster amplitude is uh, are real, then only keep these terms. So you do the trotterizations, um, and then you have certain number of amplitudes and 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 power strings. Now because there is an imaginary part as well, you need to have these power strings. So it, this will double your uh, the, the double your circuit depth. That's not really a problem. I mean, it's it, it scaling wise, it's not a problem. It's just a factor of two. Um, so this in the momentum space scaling wise, you are still better off because uh, the summations are uh, not add to the four, but add to the three. So, and and, and it's still released. So even the addition of the the, up, the complex factor allows for a unitary rotation. There's no problem yeah. in that. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So still, still, it still remains unitary. Excellent. Cool. All right. Thank you for the talk. Uh, we have an hour break now and then we resume at one o'clock.